Hey everyone, Ryan from eBike Escape. In this video, we're reviewing the Extra Cycle Swoop, the most premium cargo electric bike that's ever been on the channel. Let's get into it. Before we get started, if after this video, you've decided to pick up your own Extra Cycle electric bike, we would really appreciate it if you use our link down in the description before you make your purchase. It's a free and easy way to help support the channel and makes videos like this one possible. Thank you so much for your support. Or maybe you're looking to buy some accessories, check out our popular electric bike accessories list, as well as the high quality accessories that we offer ourselves at shop.ebikeescape.com. We'll also link our top e-bike brands page and our electric bike discounts code page in case you're looking for a deal on an electric bike. With that, let's get into the walk around of the Extra Cycle Swoop. If you're not familiar with our reviews, we'll go through all the components. Then we'll do some first person riding footage. I'll talk about how the bike rides, take it up a large hill. And then finally, at the end of the video, we'll get into some third person riding footage where I'll give you my concluding thoughts on this cargo electric bike. So if you're familiar with the channel, you know we absolutely love cargo electric bikes. So it shouldn't be surprising that we are very excited that Extra Cycle reached out for this review. We've reviewed a ton of cargo electric bikes. So if you're in the market, be sure to check out all of our other reviews. But this cargo electric bike is a lot different. So first off, the company has been around since 1998. So they've had 25 years to really perfect cargo bikes, of course, they got into electric cargo bikes more recently. And that really is what makes these bikes even better because of course you have the assist and you can travel further and take even more cargo. So first let's talk about price. This bike is priced at $4,999. I don't know about you, but that is half the cost of the vehicle that we own. But on the other hand, this also can replace a vehicle. So maybe that cost is justified depending on how much you're gonna use it. I personally think that's where electric bikes really shine because they end up paying for themselves. I have seen the bikes go on sale from time to time. They recently did a sale with their everyday rider bundle. That's actually what we have on here. I'll be sure to call out all the optional accessories versus what comes included. They do offer two different models. This is the Swoop and it's just offered in this really nice colorway called Vista Blue. And given the name Swoop, this is the step through. And they also have the Stoker. My wife and I went back and forth on which one to review and ultimately landed on the Swoop. I really like the step through, so does my wife. It just makes it that much easier, especially if you have some cargo in the back, just gives you a little bit more confidence. Now the Stoker is more of their adventure oriented cargo electric bike. It's supposed to be more capable off road. But the deciding factor for us was looking at the wheel size. So the Swoop comes with a 26 inch wheel in the front and a smaller 20 inch wheel in the rear. And that means that the rack and all the weight in the rear is actually a little bit lower than the Stoker. And after looking a little bit more about the specs of the tires, it didn't seem like going with the Stoker was actually going to make the bike more versatile. We've taken this bike on some crushed gravel and it's been just fine. Just maybe not quite as versatile if you go on some big adventures with perhaps more rocky terrain. Another reason that my wife and I got really excited about this particular cargo electric bike is because we saw pictures with three kids back here. You'll notice that there's two Thule seats but we actually have a third child on the way. So we're really excited that there will be the possibility that we can throw all three kids back there, of course, when they're out of the Thule seats. All right, let's talk about the included versus optional accessories. Firstly, we have the included freeloader sling bags, and this is something that we've been using quite a bit for farmer's market trips. Usually when you have two Thule seats installed, you just lose the option of having cargo down here. But the way this works, you actually can have the straps that go outside of that and you still have a decent amount of storage. And yes, you do get two of them. So that's really nice for increased hauling capability. Also included are what they call the U-tubes, which are these. These are the running boards that are of course nice for your kids to put their feet on and also where the freeloader bags sit. 
Perhaps not surprisingly, you have an included kickstand. This is the Kickback 3, which is by far the best kickstand that I've used on a cargo electric bike. It's just very wide, it's very stable. Even having the kids up here, it's just a lot more confidence inspiring. And you also get included fenders, as well as the lights, which I'll turn on in a little bit. And in the rear, they are full coverage fenders. I've already mentioned a few things that we like about this electric bike, but I think the two standout features, especially comparing it to other cargo electric bikes, is one, the weight. This bike weighs 62.9 pounds, and it's made of cremoly steel. And it was pretty obvious to us as we started moving this electric bike around that it was just lighter weight than a lot of cargo electric bikes that we've been riding as of late. And that is a huge deal, especially when you have it loaded in the rear. Speaking of the rear, the other thing that makes this bike so stable when it's loaded is that the kids sit very low or any cargo really. And that's of course due to the smaller wheel in the rear. And when you're riding precious cargo like children, having that weight distribution as low as possible, trust me, makes a huge difference. Let's dive into the components. Firstly, we have hydraulic disc brakes. Not surprising, but these are four piston hydraulic disc brakes made by Tektro. If you wanna look them up, they are the M745 brakes. And it should go without saying, they provide plenty of stopping power. Those are paired with Shimano 180 millimeter rotors and attaching the front wheel is a through axle. It's a little bit more sturdy, a little bit more precise. Again, something that you only really expect on more premium electric bikes. But just keep in mind, you do need an Allen in order to remove this. Say you happen to get a flat. I briefly talked about the tires, but in the front, we have a Schwalbe Supermoto X tire 26 by 2.4 inches. And again, in the rear, it's 20 inches, but still 2.4 inches wide. These tires have some street tread, though we have been taking them out on some crushed gravel paths and haven't had a problem. Obviously be careful, but I do like the name brand Schwalbe tires. Next up, we have metal fenders as well as a front light, and it actually runs along the fender and it does work with the front rack installed and it is a pretty bright integrated front headlight. You can actually see that these wires are just a little bit thinner than we usually see on a lot of electric bikes. So we'll see how these hold up over time, but perhaps wanna be a little bit more careful. They do have some nice cable wrapping and of course with the rack installed, it offers really nice cable management with no issues of clearance. Let's get into the optional accessories that we've been using. Now, firstly, the Porter rack, which is underneath the bag. I'll show that off in a little bit, as well as the Porter pack, which has been one of the things we've been using the most. The bag has a magnetic closure as well as a cinch strap. And what's cool is you can kind of overload it, or if you just want to use it as more of a basket, you can actually fold this inside and then it works more as an open basket. And there are some pockets on the inside as well. What's nice about this bag is you can easily remove it, simply Velcro straps. So you have two pockets on the rear here, lifting those up exposes where it actually straps onto the rack, undo those. And there is one additional strap in the front here that attaches the bag. And so you can imagine you could put a cooler up here. These are some of the biggest bolts that I've seen on an electric bike with a front rack. So very sturdy and we've certainly loaded this up. Now other accessories that come in the Everyday Rider Swoop Bundle that I highly recommend is the Magic Carpet. So that's the seat pad in case you have children that are older than mine are that will provide some cushion in the rear. Next we have the Everyday Bike Pack. Now what's cool is this transforms into a backpack but can also go on the rails in the rear rack because it has pannier hangers on it. Though we've been finding, especially having the two Thule seats that the sling bags suit our needs a little bit better. And finally, no cargo electric bike would be complete, at least in my opinion, if you have children without the long tail hoopty in the rear. It's nice and wide and What's really cool is they have the double rails and they have some comfort grip here. So the kids can put their hands here and no risk of them getting pinched if say you take a tight corner. And they also have different options in case you want a open hoopty. So we'll throw some of those pictures on the screen for other options. Let's jump into the cockpit. Now we do have some optional accessories, which I will highlight. But firstly, 
The included ergonomic locking grips, very comfortable. We have the matching Tektro brake levers for those four piston hydraulic disc brakes. Note there are no motor cutoffs because this is a class one electric bike with no throttle. So you don't really need to have motor cutoffs when you have a bike that's only powered while you're pedaling. Moving on to the other side of the cockpit, we have SRAM components for the drivetrain. This is a NX 11 speed trigger shifter. Now, these are components that you simply won't find on more affordable electric bikes. And these SRAM components are the same ones you'll find on mountain bikes. So it should go without saying that they are of high quality. The handlebars have a slight swoop to them, which puts you in a slightly more upright riding position. I wouldn't call it fully upright. Now let's talk about some of the optional accessories that we've been using. This is the Hornet, the latest version of the DB140 super loud bike horn. It has two different settings. It's not something we use often, but when you need to get a driver's attention, it comes in handy. On the left side, we have a bar end mirror. This is one you can pick up at shop.ebikeescape.com. Always more safe to be able to see what's going on behind you. And of course, our cell phone mount that holds very large phones like mine. Moving on to the display again, they're using the Shimano motor with the controller. Let's go ahead and turn that on. I will need to turn the battery on right here, the button. And when that lights up, you know that your display is going to turn on. Now, whether it's Bosch or Shimano, their displays are very simplistic. Simple battery bars in the top right-hand corner, current speed. Hitting the middle button will change the information you get. Currently, we're on trip distance and odometer is actually the same because we haven't reset the trip. Currently 79 miles. And then you also have range and that's going to change depending on the pedal assist level. Now with this Shimano system, you only get three levels of pedal assist. First is Eco, the first level of pedal assist, estimates a range of 47 miles with the current battery capacity. Going up to Trail, 23 miles and the third and final pedal assist level called boost, 15 miles of range. There's also a light button on the bottom. Turn your lights on and off. Moving down to the frame, we have the nice extra cycle badge. And below that, we have a bottle cage mount. This is the Sidewinder. Again, you can pick this up at shop.ebikeescape.com. But what's really nice is it holds big water bottles like this one, and particularly with the Sidewinder on this bike, it gives you more clearance so you can actually put a water bottle here. We also have top load ones if you'd prefer and you can turn this in. And what's nice is you can use your current water bottle. I already talked about the step through frame, 18 inches right here. And this bike has a 400 pound total capacity. Let's talk about the Shimano motor. This is the EP8. It is a 250 watt motor with 85 newton meters of torque. And what keeps this bike super lightweight is that it weighs just 5.75 pounds. Moving on to the pedals, the bike actually came with plastic pedals. So we went ahead and replaced them right away with these really nice red shift pedals that give you more visibility on the road. They have flashing modes and they actually can go to sleep. And then when you start pedaling again, they turn on. And it's just really nice to have any kind of additional visibility while you're riding. All right, let's talk about the battery and charger. First, the charger, again, not surprisingly, a Shimano charger. And while I really love where the battery is as far as its position, super low, keeps the center of gravity really low. It also helps with the motor. Now, one of the downsides is it can be really tricky to get the plug in here if you wanna charge the battery while it's on the bike. You kinda of almost have to touch the chain, which is a little bit frustrating. Now, that wouldn't be such a big deal, but it's also a little annoying to remove the battery itself. I'll show you how I've personally found the best way to do this. I have the key here and we will unlock the battery. Turning the key to the left will unlock it and you can see it comes towards me. But what I do is simply pull it towards me enough for the battery to come loose and then actually go the other way with it so you don't have to worry about the chain. And so now I could bring the battery in to charge. This battery is a 36 volt, 17.5 amp hour battery. 
And since this is a Shimano battery, I wanted to show off the ISO battery cover. So this can protect your battery while it's on the bike from elements. It's also flame resistant. You can check it out at shop.ebikeescape.com. And to put the battery back, I'm gonna enter it from the other side. There's a little tab here and simply push it into place. And remember to turn the bike on, there's a button at the top of the battery. And there's a closer look at the battery cover installed. Moving up from the battery, we have an extra cycle branded seat. If you find that you want more comfort, check out our electric bike accessories list where I share the most popular ones that I see people purchase. Otherwise you could add a suspension seat post as well. The biggest thing for my wife and I is making sure we can adjust that seat so it works for both of us. And it indeed does. My wife is five foot five and I'm six feet tall. Now for our kiddos in the rear, these are the Thule Next Maxi seats. Not to be confused with the Thule Yup Maxi seats, there is a difference. These actually clamp on to this rail system as part of the rack. And if you have young children, these are a necessity in my opinion. A more premium priced product, but you really get your use out of it. Moving to the rear of the bike, again, the rear fender as well as the integrated rear light Pretty difficult to see in daylight, so if you want more visibility, perhaps check out those pedals. Otherwise, a rear rechargeable light. It's going to be difficult to see underneath these U-tubes, but this is the SRAM NX 11 to 42 tooth cassette in the rear, and in the front is a 42 tooth front chain ring. Again, very high quality components from SRAM. And also with those U-tubes, they can be easily removed with the push of a button on each side. And since this is a cargo electric bike, we do have the pannier hangers here. This is where you can mount that backpack that they sell. The bike also has internal cable routing and some reinforcements with the step through frame. And we do have a deflopulator right here. And what that does is it just helps keep the tire centered where it's supposed to be, especially when you're hauling lots of cargo. But that's enough talking about this electric bike. Let's see how it performs with both of our kids on the rear rack. So we've gotten some comments on some of our cargo e-bike reviews saying we should be testing them out with cargo. And I couldn't agree more. So we have some cargo in the rear, my two kiddos. And so we're going to run through the first person riding footage with both of them here in the rear. Let's get into it. First, I'm going to rock the kickstand forward. And of course we have the really nice step through frame design and I'll hop on. I have the speedometer app by Cool Nix on our favorite cell phone holder available at shop.ebikeescape.com. We'll be able to compare the speed with the Shimano display. Again, eco, trail and boost. Okay, here we go in first gear, eco level pedal assist or pedal assist level one and the gearing on this is such that you definitely need to shift up in this first level of pedal assist, so I'm going to do so. Second, third, fourth gear, fifth gear, going about six miles an hour. This is a little bit more of a cadence that I would prefer, maybe even a little bit harder. Sixth gear, going about eight, nine miles an hour. And this bike is really designed to just enhance your riding, to provide that assistance. It's not going to overpower you. Going about nine, 10 miles an hour. Let's go into seventh gear, actually. A little bit of a slower cadence. All right, second level of pedal assist. This is trail. And I could shift up even more. Going about 11 miles an hour. 12 miles an hour. And certainly still putting in some effort. Now I will say while riding this around with kids, cargo, grocery shopping, most often we are riding in the highest level of pedal assist. So I'm gonna put in boost and actually really felt the motor a little bit there. I'm gonna shift up and I'm actually going to go all the way up into its highest gear. So 11th gear. And you can see now we're cruising more at 
18 miles an hour. Keep in mind, this is a class one electric bike. No throttle, top speed of 20 miles per hour while pedaling. And the Shimano display right now is reading just shy of 19. And again, if I put in a little bit more effort, we're going to get to that 20 miles an hour. And this is pretty much how we've been using this electric bike. Turn it all the way up into the highest pedal assist level and just cruise around town. I do wish maybe there was one more gear because my wife and I prefer a little bit of a slower cadence. And sometimes we feel like our legs are spinning a little bit faster than we'd prefer. But really cruising this on this bike at 20 miles an hour and not putting a ton of effort in is doable. It's just a super fun bike and feels very stable. But how does it perform on hills? Let's get into our hill climb test. Okay, time for the hill climb test. This is the hill that I test out all the electric bikes that I review on the channel. So you can compare and contrast. The GoPro makes this hill look much smaller than it is. So we will put a picture of the hill on the screen as well as the specs. And I'm in first gear, but I'm going to shift up second, third, fourth gear. And I am going to go into a higher level of pedal assist because more than likely you want more power going up a large hill. So I'm going to put it in boost and there we go. I can feel the motor. Let's go into fifth gear, sixth gear. And on the lower end of the gearing, you have so many different options. So I have no doubt that this bike is going to make it up the hill. And this actually feels pretty comfortable for me. Nine miles an hour, again, in boost. And I've, of course I can make it even easier on myself. I wouldn't say that this is that I'm not providing any effort. I'm certainly providing some effort, but won't get winded, but I could shift down and make it even easier on myself. And I slowed down to about seven miles an hour. And now I'm just barely pedaling. So the motor, while 250 watts, does have the ability to climb hills. And of course, you have access to all those gears to help you up a hill. I'm gonna shift back up here. So I'd say a hill like this, fifth, sixth gear, feels pretty comfortable, just depending on how much effort you really wanna put in. And about 10 miles an hour. So while it's not going to fly up any sort of hill, it's good to know that this bike certainly is capable going up steep hills like this one, in case you live in a hilly area. With that, let's get into some third person riding footage and I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the extra cycle swoop. Thumbs up. Lola, thumbs up. <laughs> There's no doubt both my wife and I have been spoiled the last month testing out the extra cycle swoop. And test it out we have using it almost daily loaded up with kids and cargo. At $4,999 plus shipping, it's pretty far from what I'd consider a budget priced e-bike, but it does go on sale and sometimes you can get some included accessories. But more importantly, what are the big differentiators here? So certainly mid-drive motors, especially name brand ones like the Shimano EP8 featured here play a role in price. The motor is quiet and we found that 90% of the time we were comfortable cruising just shy of 20 miles per hour with two kids in tow. Pretty good for a 36 volt system with a 250 watt motor. The gearing is such that hills are a non-issue so long as you don't expect to fly up steep hills. And a personal preference of mine would be to have it geared slightly higher. Either one higher gear in the rear or a larger front chainring to make pedaling easier, say you're going down a slight incline at 20 miles per hour or even faster. The shifting with the SRAM components outperform any other drivetrain we've tested out on the channel, 
Though with the mid-drive motor, we did have to remind ourselves to shift down as we came to a stop so it's easier to get going again. That's something that's simply not necessary on other hub drive cargo e-bikes with throttles to help you get started. The 36 volt 17.5 amp hour battery or 630 watt hour battery is slightly less than average. You're looking at 30 to 60 miles of range, of course, depending on a lot of factors, including how much cargo you'll haul. But that range is made possible by the fact that this e-bike is meant to just provide a boost to your own pedal power utilizing a torque sensor and measuring how much pedal input the rider is putting in. And at least for us in the highest level of pedal assist, it was a good middle ground of feeling your legs working, but not feeling like you're going to arrive to your destination winded. For us, we're using about one third of the battery on any given day, riding 10-ish miles and charging it up after for the next day. Brake-wise, the four piston hydraulic disc brakes will stop you and your load with ease. Moving on to the accessories which can make or break a cargo e-bike experience. ExtraCycle has an excellent assortment of high-end products. The Everyday Bundle has served us well. Hey, Allie here. My favorite distinction of this bike is the overall balance and comfortable feel when it's loaded in both the front and the back. It's fun to ride. The front wheel is a bit larger than the back, which keeps the weight and balance lower to the ground. Sometimes I can even forget that I have 60 plus pounds riding behind me. Even maneuvering in tighter turns in tight spaces is surprisingly easier than some other cargo e-bikes I've ridden. The longer tail end really is longer than some others we've ridden, which provides a bit more room for the Thule seats and even three kiddos once they don't need the seats. I've also noticed this bike really catches people's eye when riding around town. Not sure whether it's the pretty color, nice step through frame design, or the double handles around the kids, but being seen when riding is never a bad thing. For our family, the long tail of the Swoop is ideal, and I've been enjoying the relatively lighter weight at 70.9 pounds compared to other cargo e-bikes. If we've helped you decide that Extra Cycle fits your needs, why not support e-bike escape for free by using our affiliate link down in the description. We're in the premium mid-drive cargo category here, but there weren't any corners cut in this long tail cargo e-bike. It shows that Extra Cycle has been in the cargo bike game since 1998. Let us know what other cargo e-bikes you're considering in the comment section below. And let us know what you think of the Extra Cycle Swoop. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching, watching and, and we'll see you in the, the next one. one.